welcome to... I made a deal with the devil. Ha 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 ha. Actually, no. Fear Street. A film trilogy event on Netflix. Those of you kids out there who don't know, R.L. Stein wrote a lot of books. Most famously, the Goosebumps series. But, as the people who read Goosebumps got older, he decided to keep along with them and made the Fear Street series. Decades later, Netflix made a film trilogy about Fear Street. Mind you, it's been decades since I read those books, so I don't really remember the details. But I don't remember them being connected like this. However, the trilogy itself is amazing. My favorite part was part two. Why? It's based on a campground. Much like Friday the 13th. And I love those movies. Probably my favorite of the horror series ever. But, part one takes place in 1994. Get your regular group of kids that live in Shadyside. And the other side lives in Sunnyville. Sunnyville is all rainbows and sunshine and prosperity. Shadyville, death, disease, addiction, just god-awful. You get the protagonist and her friends and her lady friend going about their day when, well, Fear Street happens. Sarah Fear, a witch, a witch, a witch. Over 300 years ago, she cursed the town. And every 10 to 15 to 20 years, she sends a killer out for more blood. More blood for the blood god. Through the years, and just all kinds of men, women, children even, get possessed and turn into killers. Unfortunately, the main protagonist becomes the target of Sarah Fear. But she doesn't want to die, so she fights back. With her friend's help, she... Alright, well, she kind of lives through the first one, anyways. But then the second one, they go back to an earlier survivor to figure out how she stopped them. Because, yes, she survived the first movie, but Sarah Fear is still after her, sending her demons after her. So they go to an only living victim that they know of. Get a crazy idea. And, well, I don't want to spoil it. But, part three. Do I want to spoil it? I don't know if I want to spoil it. Because it's actually two movies in one. They even split it as part one, part two for part three. It's confusing, I know. But part one takes place... In like 1668 or whatever it was. Or 1694 actually I think it was. Duh, that makes sense 300 years ago from the 1994 time. Anyways. Where it follow, follows Sarah Fear and all the crazy shit that went down. I know that they used the same actors from part 1 and 2 and part 3 for even though they're time traveling. That's like, uh, the African American characters don't really fit here because, you know, it was 1694. We don't talk about that time. Anyways, then part two goes back to 1994. All this crazy shit happens. I was in very much entertained, very enthralled, invested in the story. Actually kind of surprised because this is a hard R rated R. Blood, gore, language, even nudity. I mean, come on, part two takes place at a campsite, campground, whatever you want to call it. Friday the 13th has nudity. So part two has nudity. Very little of it, but still has it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of mess up stuff that goes on in this trilogy of movies. And they are, no, they're hour half plus each one, so they are movies, not episodes or whatever you want to call it. Now, is there room for a part four? I think so. But for you to know why and how, other than the fact that it's probably getting a lot of good ratings and a lot of people watching it, you have to watch the show for yourself. So yes, I definitely recommend. Even if you didn't read the Fear Street books when you were growing up. Watch this. It's really good. It's really good horror suspense thriller. Very hard R rated R. But, hey, what you gonna do? And you know what I'm hoping for in the future? Perhaps. Maybe. Success of something like this? Maybe. Courage the Cowardly Dog rated PG-13? Live action? That would be amazing. <laughs> 
Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Watch this movie. Make a deal with the devil to make sure you get a chance to see it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out.